This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer. And, and I'm Randy Moggins. He is Randy Moggins. And uh, this is part nine in our series with Sonia Barrett on the human game. This is uh, resets and upgrades. And Randy hasn't been with us in a little bit for one of these. So he's going to be here today. Sonia's here. She's sneezing away with allergies over there in, uh, in her, her pocket of the uh, internet world. But Sonia, welcome back. And uh, we're here to play the game. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Good to be back. Good to be back. Yeah. So Sonia wrote a great article um, just a few days ago. It was actually late last week, which we will include in the description below. Some of you may have already seen it through links on Facebook and whatnot. Um, and I, as soon as I saw the article, I, you know, jumped on it. Knew it was time for, for round nine. And, um, I was kind of waiting to hear what her response would be like in this funny time that we're all in, you know, people are like, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on, even for those of us who are usually good at figuring out what's going on. And, you know, you have some people who are like, um, for some reason, I'm oddly calm. Should I be freaking out? I don't know. And other people who are freaking out, it's like, why are they freaking out? Nothing's wrong. But whenever I uh, come up, bump up against something where like, I'm a little, don't know if I should be concerned or not. I look to see if Sonia's freaking out. And if she's, not freak <laughs> if she's not freaking out, then I know there's no reason to freak out. And I also know she probably won't ever freak out, and so everything's going to be okay. So <laughs> here, to, uh, here to sort of break down some of the contents of that article and for us to just sort of sort through all of these um, new, old, but new sort of possibilities, circumstances, dilemmas, opportunities, gifts that we have been graced with in this time. Uh, that's what we're going to do here today. So Yeah, let me throw this up on the screen real quick yeah. and people can get a look at this. This is the article. This is at therealsoniabarrett.com. And uh, I reposted this the other day. Um, this article, really, Sonia, was incisive. Um, you're echoing a whole bunch of things that I'm seeing, thinking, feeling too. And I, I you know, you know that I made a comment about the, 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 the quote you have here, the pull quote from Robert Wright, um, largely because I think there's a visceral response to people being reminded that we have been played, that we kind of are puppets. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants to know that. Nobody wants to admit it because I know. <laughs> the first stage of getting over it is, is a lot of to own it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the article we're going to talk about. The links will be down in the box as always for you to partake. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny though. Yeah. But, but I knew what Randy was saying, but um, I think, yeah, you saw me explain it on there. Mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. Beautifully. People, People love to be in denial, particularly um, the folks that are even in the awareness movement or the spiritual movement or the conscious movement. A lot of times they don't think that they are also being puppeted, but my whole thing is that everybody, yeah, kind of like a virus, everybody is infected or has been affected in some way. And because it's a lot of it is so subtle, um, it's like you have to just like like you're saying, Randy. It's like you have to wake up to that realization. You wake up to that realization, then you can do something about it. But it's kind of like, oh no, 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 that I'm completely unaffected. No, you know, nobody's controlling me. In the meantime, I'm watching this person's actions, and I'm like, boy, <laughs> you drank the Kool Aid. You drank the whole pitcher. Um, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like people. It's They've been at it for a long time. The they that we're talking about, of course, are the, you know, those uh, forces that tend to um, create the rules and the laws 
um, pretty much, you know, we're talking in, in our 3D world and obviously, and even outside of our 3D world. So it's a very, it's a similar model of um, uh, running, let's say, running people. Just like we, we talk about when you run a business, well, human beings are, are run by other folks. And there's so many le layers and levels of that running that um, you get some people that will, um, you know, just feel like they're exempt from it. It's like, it's like I have to use the, the idea of slavery because this is a, we're in a different um, concept, a different level of slavery then. There is so many different levels of, of enslavement. And, you know, in corporate America, same thing. You know, just because you're in upper management, it doesn't mean that you're also not, not enslaved. You know, you're just on a different level of that and you're running the other slaves, you know, and then another le level down, they're running, the, uh, um, you get another level of management. So it's this hierarchical system, which is, with a, which is what the article talked about, this deep level, um, you know, tiers, uh, levels deep of how we are um, impacted in, in every which way. And that's what I wanted people to just first get it, first see that, okay. You know, when, you were, when you were saying that, uh, Aretha F Franklin jumped into my head and I started hearing Chain of Fools. <laughs> and, that's, a, that's a good one. Uh, that's a, yeah. that's yeah. really, yeah. yeah. But it's kind of true that I'm too young whatever, to know that one. you know, whatever oh, level you embryo. are at, you are probably also at a level under somebody else. That's true. It, it is totally true. That's, that's the game though. Um, it is, it, it's layered like that. Um, and so we have an opportunity to, depending on, you know, the level that we're at, each level has an opportunity to uh, rise up from it and, and, and obviously go beyond um the whole puppeting uh, concept but first you have to be able to uh to see what you've invested in and all the suggestions because we live based on suggestions and that was the thing that i really looked at some time back it's you know much of our lives are um suggested who we think we are is by suggestion and that's been good that's from in turn near you're in the womb uh it's it's suggested who who you are your identity so again, you know, the systems in place, the school system, the uh, work system, the religious system, the governmental system, it's just layers of it that you're working with. And it's not to be feared. That's, that's the other thing I, want, I was throwing out is like, this is not about being afraid and running around and how can I get out of it? It's just, that's not the answer that you don't get out of it. Not like that. You, you awaken and you, um, go into uh, you transcendence, you, you transcend uh, levels of this thing, but it's not a thing where you're running away because you can't, you can't run. It's like running away from yourself. There's you no can't run away. Yeah. Have so, you, oh, sorry, sorry, when you're speaking of how suggestibly we are, like I'm thinking of just the very nature of who we think we are is, is completely suggested. I don't know if you've seen that commercial for, I can't remember if it's for Ancestry or for 23andMe, where mm. the guy is like, thinks he's from one ethnicity, like right, some, right, 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 like Irish or, or oh, Italian. He's German right? or and whatever. he's dressed in that and he's attending yeah. all of those sort of functions. And then he gets his test back and he finds he's not that, he's something else. And the next weekend they show him doing the cultural activities right, for that. Right, right. And it, it, it didn't even, it was just like a, a switch was flipped, right. right? Because we think of like, you know, there are certain things that prove who we are, right? right? right. And there's none of those greater than our genetic markers or our right. DNA. And this gets into some of what I know Randy wants to, to really talk about today and, and why he was excited when he saw some, some of your, the stuff that you wrote about. But this idea, like, you know, like we don't really know. Like we, we have been so um, bombarded with information from other people, from our parents, from the state, from We're our teachers. We're programmed to be programmed. Yeah. To, 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 like, we've never, like, 
you know, one of the things when you start to really get honest with yourself, that question of who am I, right, really comes up. And, and it's crazy how many times you're sitting up there at the age 40, 50, 60, or even 70 or whatever, not knowing for sure, like you think you have some idea, but like at the bottom of that really, maybe not really, because all of the things that you like and dislike about yourself were all either placed there or encouraged or discouraged or whatever by the authority figures around you. And, and so then who is I? That would be the biggie. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole other show right there. It's like, who is I? You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I know we're going to get into some of this today. Um, there's a lot there in your article. Randy, I don't know if you had something you were about to say right before I kind of jumped in. Why don't, you, I, why don't you go ahead? If you had something you wanted to say, why don't you say it? I think I, I was, lost the thought, and that's okay. Okay. We'll come back. So there was a lot of stuff in your in your article. Like, you know, it was kind of like both a reflection on the truth of where we're at and an open door to some of the possibilities that, that can come from it. And so I don't know how we want to kind of go about it in the show. I was thinking like, you know, maybe we start with some of these um, apparent like controls or restrictions that seem to be being placed and maybe, you know, diffuse some of the um, unnecessary fear and, and chaos that are around those ideas. And then in the second, in the patrons hour, get more into like some of these marvelous possibilities that we're being presented with. Right. I'm, I, we can do it that gap or I'm open to just going however it flows. But there's a, that was a long article. There was a lot it, of stuff. It there was 12, it's 12 pages. It's just on the internet. It doesn't look that long. Yeah. I was not trying to write a 12 page article. I was not. And I was so irritated that it was just going on. So you'd hear me pull away from it and go, oh, my God, for real? Seriously? So yeah. I didn't have a, it's like I didn't have a choice. So I, it took me a few days yeah. because I would just go away from it. And I'm like, uh, then I come back. But, but it, I, it needed to come. It needed to be written. And mm -hmm. I, I, it's one of those things where when you write sometimes it's all there. Maybe not all in words, but now you have to put it on paper like an artist. You see it, but now you have to draw in detail. And uh, so that's what it was. And, and that art article could actually, it could have gone on and on. It could have been a book because there's so many facets that I still did not cover and um, have another short one that, you know, I'm, still, I'm working on. It's not going to be that long. But yes, um, I think one of the things that did strike me too is this whole idea of um, being isolated or, or being quarantined, even though you can leave your house, people are now still programmed with the idea that you're supposed to be in for X amount of time, whether uh, from, from the date it was said to, um, they said the 19th of April or to the end of the month. The bottom line of it is, uh, I looked at the, hab the habitual nature of human beings and the, the, the length of time that we say it takes to, to, um, to develop a new habit. To, uh, to change patterns. And so I was also looking at that and I thought, how interesting. Who were people before, they, um, before this happened and who will they be? What, what are the changes? What of, of the suggestions that are floating around? Mm -hmm. um, what will they become? Who will they be when this is all over? Because this, it's a period of um, changing habits, particularly with the... Um, social distancing that that concept will it be very will it look sort of funny to us to see um you know two people holding hands i saw a couple holding hands the other day and i and it, for a moment there it was like oh two people holding hands and it made me think wow look at your look at the thought process here look at how you zoned in on that sonia as aware as you are you zoned in on that because suddenly our familiar um, and our normal is going to change in terms of our behavior without realizing it. They're telling us to bump with our elbows. Don't hug. The distrust, we already have that issue, but the distrust level is also going to be increased in terms of um, human beings, you know, to, to each other and the fear and uncertainty for, you know, for a while. But eh, how much of a lot of these things will we notice? You don't notice things when they become your normal. So there's, I'm just giving you some of the obvious things, but there's a lot of other things that will 
be there that will happen with people for the for that period of time um, that they probably will not notice then I don't want to jump ahead either. So I'm just going to throw this out there and then I'll stop. And There's no back. ahead to jump. Remember, we're all nonlinear here. So. No, whoa, well, okay. You're, you're more than welcome to just quantum leap right over to whatever right, point well, jump hey, up next. Here I am. I'm, I'm over on the other side. We're random. Um, I'm just kind of throwing it as it comes so, up. So one of the thoughts right that's been, me, one but, of the thoughts that has kind of been coming across to me is the social engineering aspect of this, obviously. Right. And what is the metric or metrics that they, quote, they, social mm -hmm. engineers, either are observing or attempting to modify? Well, and, oh, okay, go ahead. Go oh, for, I thought No, go for that. It's a question. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, so right before that, there was one, one other thing I was, um, oh, gosh, now I'm like you. There was one thing I was going to say about the... Um, Y'all both have Alzheimer's, man. The social engineering. <laughs> the social engineering. I was like, okay, I'm on that thing right there. And I'm like, I'm going to tell. And then it went away. But it'll come back again. Oh, I was going to say that um, the, the concept, the idea of people, less people being on the street, also gives them an opportunity to do a lot of uh, technological upgrades. Yeah. We'll be internally, we we'll be yeah. on our streets. And um, a big part of that is the preparation for um, for 5G, but not like people think. You know, people are small-minded when it comes to what they're talking about with 5G. This is the, that's that's just like a little forerunner. 5G is just a little forerunner. So you might as well get over it, get used to it, because human beings will always adapt to whatever. That's what we do. We adapt. Um, and then, so there is an adaptation. Uh, process also going on but also it's kind of like okay let the kids go inside let them stay inside uh so that we can do what we need to do in the meantime their minds are being prepared for the kind of um digital world or uh transition that is being made for them to uh integrate into this whole online structure that we are um you know that's being set up so, so there's a lot of different layers to this, so the things going on. The virus, in all actuality, is the most minuscule part of it. <laughs> it is the tiniest is. part yeah. of what's going on. It just allows people to be um, to be distracted with fear and uncertainty, and there's nothing like the human human existence being threatened. That was one of the things I did say in the article. Yeah. So there's nothing like it being threatened. But in terms of um, the, social, the in social engineering part, it involves all of all of that, um, Randy, I think is what, what your question was, and getting people into a state where uh, things are being normalized in a subtle way. It might not seem really big, but it's being normalized. And it's being, you know, people are being changed uh, in that sense to accept that. And, it, you know, obviously it becomes a filtering process. Uh, it's again, it's like nature, survival of the fittest. You know, there, there are those that will survive this and they already know that. And then there are those that won't. And, and when I say survive the change, I'm not talking about dying of the virus right now. I'm talking about a projection over uh, the next at least five years or so, obviously as to you know how many the changes that will happen and the folks that are of a certain age now that will be in this whole other age level because it's more about creating or establishing a new, the new human not necessarily based on the old humans humans that have been here but the changeover much much of the changeover takes place more readily with new stock with the, where the minds are uh, are different, and then there are those people who um, struggle with it because we struggle as human beings to hold on to the version of reality that we are familiar with when we come here, and that's something that people really need to to uh, to realize that that not only is that what's going on that we are fighting to hold on to the familiar, but we also forget that all along the way from the inception of human beings onto the planet 
we don't even know just how watered down perhaps we we are from a more optimum or optimal version of a human being with with more expanded capabilities which we have don't that walk, don't don't walk past that point because that's actually what i'm discovering in some research i'm doing right now mm -hmm. in dna that that's important in this present stage we're in because of our technological advances we think we're advanced but mm -hmm. in truth humanity was downgraded over a very long period of time in terms of consciousness genetics right. and frankly even physiology compared to what we what we know it was originally historically so in a lot of ways what this reminds me of there's two metaphors and I'm torn between the two of them and I don't like mixing them. So we use the computer upgrade model, which is that uh, it just dropped a new operating system on your computer and now you have to reboot it and go get coffee and wait for the computer to come back up. Right. In a lot of ways, that's what this feels like to me. Yeah, it's a, it's a reset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a reset. It's a, it's a reboot. It's a reboot and upgrade because you can reboot the computer and not upgrade. So, but sometimes when you when you upgrade, you have to shut it down and and restart it. So um, that's sort of that basically the analogy um, you know that we can use because you know that is that's what is happening. The system, though, though those that are making this happen um, the, on the physical level, they are just really, as the article says. They are playing their role. They're doing their jobs. Whatever it is that they're doing, that they that they're doing, um, are doing their jobs in terms of what has to happen in this lower version of um, of reality. But in essence, it is a natural process that really has been in full swing. That has been happening. Um, that has that's triggering the necessary upgrade of human beings which you know i've talked about the default upgrade for you know for a very long time for many years that's my favorite word there's a default upgrade that happens with human beings a default upgrade in consciousness and uh, for those people who are unfamiliar um i did share a little bit about that in the article and what that really means is that um as individuals as uh, Randy and I were talking about uh, when we were dialoguing about the, the article um, as individuals we we have we have free will everybody has free will everybody's a free agent here everybody has the capacity to upgrade themselves okay but that kind of upgrade has been very challenging because we're completely we're, we're, we're very disconnected um, or, or those parts have been shut off. We have not been accessing them and accessing memory as well to remember that, um, you know, that possibility to do that. So when human beings, which is the majority, the, according to, according to what, what, according to what appears to be here, then I, I'm very, it's very significant, very important to me when I'm, I'm being very specific like that. Um, according to how it appears then in terms of how many people are actually here. Um, the, when human beings are not on their own individually upgrading and transitioning beyond the standard um, evolution, then nature moves moves everything along moves human beings along it does a a, a, re, a natural upgrade just like your computer it does in an upgrade every, uh, every so many cycles and the article does talk about that as well and i mentioned the hundred and four thousand year cycle um because that's why those cycle that seems so big that that sun cycle that was supposed to be it's a hundred what uh, 2012 or so either either way I say don't get hung up on the dates the all that you need to realize is that and remember uh, is the obvious that life is up op is is operating based on cycles your very day and night 
lets you know that. None of us can deny that, you know, we go to bed, it's nighttime, we get up, it's, you know, it's morning. That's a cycle. Those cycles are what's, what adds up, those 24-hour days and those milliseconds and those immeasurable moments. They're clock um, cycles inside of the computer itself, actually. Exactly. Yeah. So there's these cycles that happen. And then you get these big cycles after so many. And that 104,000-year cycle is, is really just a culmination of four 26,000-year cycles, you know, which, of course, has to do with the, um, the Earth's the precision, which is the movement right. of the Earth uh, around. The precession, uh, yeah, the precession, the precession of the equinox. Yeah. Exactly. And so, so you're looking at basic science is, is, is the point I'm trying to get people to make so that they can, you know, we can remove ourselves from all the, the little woo-woo stuff. I'm going to find another word for woo-woo one day, but right now. <laughs> I use woo-woo because um, it's, it's people who want to understand this, they need to, to be able to, to just open their minds to looking at creation as the ultimate level of technological um, uh, movement, technological creation, engineering, uh, beyond anything our minds can imagine, you know, so take your mind off of the minuscule interpretation and definition of technology and realize that in the bigger picture we're talking well, about. The uh, other side of that is that we don't scale well to larger numbers. Yes. You know, because we're finite creatures in, in yeah. our mortal state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a normal human being thinks in terms of about 100 years. Right, right. What, what you would consider optimal lifespan. And our thinking tends to go along with that as well. So mm -hmm. when we get to a certain age, and Lord knows I'm there, mm -hmm. when I can look back through the dustbins of my history, that things changed considerably in the last 50 years. Big time. A lot. It's been a rapid but, technological But it's been change. accelerated mm -hmm. tremendously, I would say, since the late 80s, and even more so as we went into that 2012 it's cycle. Yep. It's been and like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's hard for us to grasp 100,000 years. 100,004 years puts you right around the time of Lemuria. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about the, the rising and falling of civilizations, massive right. civilizations. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, and that, yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you said that about um the numbers because that's part of marketing that's part of what they say in terms of uh media and how they uh, market the news to people um because they know that after certain certain large numbers it's very difficult for people to process that so that's why they always um if if, if a disaster happens and you know hundreds of people die or whatever they always select one or two they give you a few individuals to focus on and they tell you about their lives and, and what happened to them, and they, you know, how they died in this explosion, bombing, fire, whatever, because it allows people to get a better grip on, you know, on, on the several hundred or thousand people that died. So we do have this, um, these restrictions when it comes to these numbers. And, and, and again, you know, it's, we, we have been programmed for quite some time to um we're very quantitative first of all yes but we stay in small numbers and and a good part of that is because our own expiration um is set on these small numbers so it's very hard for us to think outside of that into into much bigger numbers you're just kind of programmed for that this is you know like this is how long you live um, anything outside of these numbers, it's an impossibility. So it's amazing the kind of programming that we've been um, operating under. And so, you know, again, going back to the cycles and we see um, that how nature take, you know, nature does what it does and it has to, its job is to keep going, is to keep going, just like repopulating the, you know, the, the planet in, in some way or another to keep, to keep that life um, process going and not only is it necessary to keep um, human beings going but the possibilities in terms of what can be experienced here mm -hmm. as a human being 
that has to keep going as well. Yeah. But that only, that has a cutoff. That happens only up until the point of the level at which human beings are. It only can take you to the, con the level of consciousness of the human being and then it starts over. Then that's why people die. They, they, they exit, they expire because they, their perception and their ability to see anything bigger and to actually activate themselves don't happen. And so that's really important that we understand that, 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 that's why death is becomes a program. It's just, you know, it's just a whole bunch of programs that we are uh, operating by. But I think that's really important for, for people to understand. And that's why nature has to keep the evolution, keep evolving people. And then now it's evolving human beings automatically up to a certain point. And the technology that's here today is it's rapid, but it's part of helping people to uh, unlock just a little bit more, except for the rest of, the, of us who are able to see the bigger picture and be ready to unlock ourselves. But we still have to deal with transcending the programs because since we agreed to be part of this reality experience, we have those programs as well. So when you're talking, I'm thinking of, you know, the two major programs and all the same people who are into one or into the other, right? The two major programs that almost everyone is running is the death program and the, the either some people would choose to look at it as the government program or others would say it's the debt program, right? Because they're very yeah. similar. But I mean, obviously, we all know here that the government, if you break it down, the words actually mean mind control, right? Right. But if you right. have a death program, like those same people who, like when I suggest the possibility that I'm maybe I'm not going to die, right? You, maybe you I'm cut, like, you, cut, uh, out a, you, know, you cut out a second. We so talk about challenging that. that death paradigm. It, Emily, you cut the out The same for a people moment. that are, can you hear me? You cut out for a moment. So I, I didn't hear what you were, were you able to hear Randy? No, no, yeah. she was cutting out. Yeah, right. you, you said something, um, but it, but that part got cut out. You were explaining, and then you said, "Okay, so there's the 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 death the death program and the government program." Or right. some people could could, could could you could alternate the government program with the debt program, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so every person who I've ever suggested the possibility that maybe we don't have to die to that, that death is a program and that it is possible that people who are here right now on earth are not going to die in the way that you think, you know, in, in a typical manner. Those are the same people that are highly offended when I suggest the possibility that we may be happier without government or that we could live without government. Right. right, right so right. those two are the things that their, their life are set up on. So you have a limited amount of time and when at least for most of us, when we think about like the other than for those of us who've done enough work on ourselves, we recognize that the person who generally limits your possibilities is actually you. But the way we most people think of it is that our the number of experience experiences we're allowed to have are limited or by government, right? right. So it's so funny that the people who are insist like those two things go together that time frame and that limitation of its possible experiences right, right. so it's you have a shortened time frame to experience this many experiences right? right and in order to have the more experiences in some ways requires the expansion of the time as well right because yep. to, to get to that level of consciousness where you're able to recognize all these programs and recognize these games and whatnot so one sort of relies on the other and so yeah. that connection there, and part of the way that people keep track of those two things is time and money, right? And so if you basically, those are where, and if you challenge anybody, if you go, if I challenge my, my father on either one of those things, the answer to is always that you're insane, you're delusional, you're yeah. out of touch with reality and all that kind of stuff. Whatever has mastered like those two programs, like that's the 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 two pillars of social engineering right like the right. two big like are the two you know what are those two that on 9 11 the two towers that yeah the, what's oh, it, the, the twin towers you, you know, right but there's a biblical name for what those oh, ya yakim and boaz right so they're not the, biblical they're masonic masonic okay yeah. so you know that's the same thing like right like age and government right, right. or time and money it's the oh, same yeah, thing right. those are the two pillars that basically keep this system 
um, in check. And both of those things are being threatened with this, with this whatever the virus, right? right. Like we're worried about old people dying, right. right? Like they're saying that we're doing all this to protect the old people, right? And then what is it doing to the economy? So again, these are the two things that are that are being focused on as we sort of look. See, look even right? when you say that term, the economy, Mm -hmm. That eliminates the possibility that there are other economies, right? which is exactly part of the mind control that they've worked on us. Mm -hmm. It's why they don't like what they call, quote, under the table money, or um, what is the term? The, uh, the, the, uh, the underground economy, the, the gray black, market, the black the gray economy, market, the black market. Yeah, yeah, gray market, black market. They all or shoved off to the side as being, quote, illegal, which it is within their systems. So right. it eliminates any other possibilities that we could, like the Phoenix rise up out of this and begin to establish what we should be doing, what we should have done, parallel economies that operate in coexistence with whatever it is, whatever shit they're running, right? but independent of it. Right. Yeah, well, it, it is, a, right now it is about lack and deficiency, um, it's deficit. It, it is about running out, um, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. time and money. So those are the two big things for people is running out of time in their lives. That's why that is the, that is how you affect anybody because that is the human being's greatest fear is to, um, is to lose their life force, uh, is expiration, is... Um, annihilation is never existing. That is the root of all human beings is, you know, most people will beg for their lives. It is the most significant thing for us. Well, that's, that's what you threaten. You threaten that and health threatens um, one's existence. And right now that's what's happening with people. They feel that. And, and on top of that, you've got that. And then the, running out of time and running out of money, yeah. um, as you say. So, so those two things um, are the blanket energy that's being run. And so it's a lack and deficit and death. Um, it's, a, it's a death energy um, that people mm -hmm. are really uh, experiencing all the way around in so many different ways, uh, controlling that. And because we are programmed to operate on these um, yeah, quantitative because we live in a reality where it's it's everything is quantified. You know, we deal with time, we deal with money. Um, you know, you, you obviously our age, which is which is time related. Everything is measured here, mm -hmm. um, and so somebody it was created already. It's established in our minds uh, as to what those boundaries are. Even your perception that's still, that's still quantified. You know, uh, how far can you stretch your perception well you've got a boundary somebody's created boundaries over whoever knows how wherever that's existed because boundaries are also individual and bloodline based also mm -hmm. um and family based and you know so there's all these different kinds of of boundaries that we um that we're dealing with that we're coming up uh, against so it's it's a lot of things that people are it's a lot that's up in the air right now and uh people we're gonna i guess you said we're gonna talk about those opportunities we're gonna do it in the second half yeah uh, but i think it like you, you said, can tease it out a little bit here yeah yeah in in this half i think more than anything else it's super important that people come to terms and truth with yourself i don't care every time we do an interview i don't care which interview amen, i do on whatever show it always comes back to you have to to be honest with yourself about yourself and what your truth is, what you believe, not somebody else's truth. You know, don't don't get on a high horse and um, and defend a scripture and defend uh, other doctrine. What do you think? What What do you think? Because the the most authentic and most aligned um, truth is going to be what you're going to truly feel down here. This is why we are so programmed and it's so enforced to keep people at a distance from themselves. This is why the enforcement of external suggestion um, is, is so enforced because people are programmed to 
believe that they're not capable of being responsible for themselves. They're not mm -hmm. capable of governing themselves. They're, they don't know enough and you need a minister or you need you always need a go-between. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. You need government. Yeah. Yeah. You need a go-between. You need a savior. So the so the savior program is part of what's running right now because we they create the problem and now the people are hoping that they save them. And this is where this vaccine and all that's coming in. They're you know they're people waiting. Problem, for reaction, solution. Class. Exactly. Class, try that. And then, then, then you're, then you're, they're happy, and then they're all over that person, which is so ridiculous because this is how elections get, you know, won and lost. Because, you know, if, if the orange man comes up with um, a solution or what appears to be in his time anyway, still in, in office, you know, it's like, oh, he saved us because of the savior mentality, they want somebody to save it. Oh, you saved us, okay, we're gonna vote for you. So they, they rely on the fickleness of, uh, of human beings. And, and it don't matter for those people who are like, oh, well, we don't like him. Well, everybody, you're, you're also still um, under some sort of little bit of mind control too. So you have to process what you're talking about when you're even talking about what you like or don't like. And if you're still on the verge of, uh, you know, a Republican or Democrat or whatever the heck it is, then you still got some mind control programs going. You need yeah, to really. lay, <laughs> exactly. you have to lay it all out and look at it because they'll have nothing to do with you know whether it's a Republican or Democrat or whatever country you're in and um and, and who's in charge. This is about you. This is about each of us. The nature is pushing this. You know, some the naturalness, the natural laws are there to force people into either staying with the default or uh, uh, upgrading themselves, waking up enough to wipe enough sleep from their eyes to be able to begin to penetrate these old programs that have been there <coughs> and begin to upgrade themselves. So this is where we are right now and people have an opportunity to do that, you know, so I I'll stop right there. Um, I want to I want to draw this in because I want you to be heard addressing this. Um, in the article, you go you have a, a header called the real ID. You mm. open that segment of the article with quote all interactions, particularly with the system, is transactional based on acceptance of the terms and conditions offered in the exchange. Uh, this to me. Is like one of the, another one of those bullet point take away, highlight it, bold it, and put it in italics. The and this is where people get stumbled up because they assume that this is authoritarian rather than understanding. On a continual basis, we give our consent, we accept terms tacitly or explicitly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, and, and and that's why once. Technology, once once computers, we all started interacting with them, um, that is when we really started to come in contact with seeing, oh, terms, terms of service <laughs> and user license agreements. Exactly. But yeah. we've been doing it all along. It's just that we didn't have the digital world. So, you know, we're really paying attention. Now you basically are just going, we just have to go ahead and we're saying yes to ev everything anyway, because Oh, you want to use this app? Oh, then let us in. You want to use this app? Let us into your photos and your and your documents your on your phone. And your phone and, numbers and your text messages. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Let us let us in, or else you can't use it. So, um, you know, I personally, I mean, there was a time when I was extremely, extremely rebellious um, <laughs> with the system. No, not you. Always like, you know, clash. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm raging. Um, but then, but then you start to come to a place. You start to understand the game more. The more we understand the game, the easier it will be to play it because your choices are going to be such conscious choices. And if when you are battling with it, you're battling. You just play always right into the, into the hands. You run right towards the thing that you're trying to run away from because these engineers, these folks that have been doing this. They are masters at it, and they have been doing it for a long time, and they have it in their bloodline from their own descendants 
uh, I mean, not descendants, but but from their um, ancestry ancestors. Yeah. You know, that's why you get uh, these folks that have gen. You know, you weren't wrong though. Technically, wealth. descendants, ancestors. Mm, yeah, it's a whole other conversation. Yeah, it's yes. just really crazy. But yeah, they're you know they're they've got it. That's that's why they generally try to set it up. Those particular ones that remain in power, kind of like the um, like the royal family, like folks that have wealth and rule and have ruled for years, they stay in power and, and generationally moving forward, the money is always there in place. So it, when you're born into, into whatever bloodline, whatever you're born into, it, it comes just like a computer, it looks like a system, with you already are encoded with some particular programs. Because obviously, yeah, it's, it's blood. It's blood. It's in there. Information is in the blood. It's in the DNA. So you come in with this information. And it always fascinates me because um, in, in a very just minuscule observation of people born into money, uh, not, not just one generation, but you get generational, like several levels, they could lose all their money tomorrow and they will get it back. Mm -hmm. They will gain it again because they have a program for it. Most folks do not have a program. That's huge. That's really yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. If you have yeah. a program for lack and you have a program to stay in your lane, to stay mm -hmm. in your place in terms of power and, in, and, and money means power. In that structure that's been created, money is power. You, your, your family lineage, that group that you're from, it's made several, for most people, uh. several generations back. There's no, there's no, wealthy people like billionaires or whatever going generations back so the program it takes a minute for that program to change so you get people that come in and they end up having money some people do and then they lose it all so it takes a minute to cement just like a habit to cement that program and have it established because everything is about a um a pattern what am i always saying the brain looks for patterns and the pattern gets, is consistent long enough, it becomes a normal part of the construct, the structure, the model. So there's, there's all these underlying um, yeah. factors involved. Yeah, that was really good. I, uh, I was like kind of seeing as you were talking like a freeway. I was looking at it as like a genetic highway, right? And you have the cars and you have the people with specific cars that can go into the hub lane and they can move faster and avoid traffic. And if that were like a financial kind of thing, for some reason, those people are hardwired with the lithium battery that allows them to, pa to pass you, to go over to that lane and pass you. And then you have other people with their sports cars who like have some muscle, they're going fast in the inner lanes. Then you have people over here with a car that is technically still a car, but the way it performs is so different, you would almost think it was a different thing. Absolutely. Right? And That's it a takes good analogy. A and it takes a while to work your way to the inner lane, and then there's this further barrier of a solid white lane that you have to you play. You, you it's have a to hybrid. figure certain things out. You're basically right? talking about a right. hybrid. Yeah, yeah, you have to figure certain things out in order to, to traverse the wormhole into that lane, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of uh, that's that was kind of what my mind was doing while you were saying that. And it's so obvious. I mean, you know, it, it, I'll let you talk, but yeah, it a lot of it is so it, the energy of that kind of wealth is so obvious when you drive into like uh, places like Malibu or La Jolla yeah. or certain areas. I mean, as soon as you drive in, it's like a completely different energy. So that's yeah. really interesting. Um, but anyway. What? And their concerns and their fears in life are so different, right? They have them just the same, but they're about different things. And so right. as we're w wrapping up this first hour, we're going to move into the cornucopia of possibilities that are also in front of us to, to sort of pick from with this situation. I do want to address, like you talked about before, in the more aware community, right, there's even within the alternative information community, there's various levels of awareness, right? There are some people who are, you know, still freaking out on the same certain political things they were freaking out on, you know, after 9-11 or whatever, and others have advanced to different levels. But I haven't, with very few exceptions, I haven't come across anyone that is fearful of the virus. The things that I hear, even up to like 
pretty high levels of awareness that are kind of expressed is concerns about 5G, right? Which 5G the, is the big thing for most folks. It's a big thing. Yeah. Concerns about the possibilities of a forced vaccine, mm -hmm. right? And concerns about not being able to travel if, with a real ID if they are not willing to take right. said forced vaccine. Right. Can right. you just, because each of these things came up in a different way in your article, can you just sort of address that here? Like, you know, you know, people have varying levels of concerns. Some of them are reasonably well-founded others are not and you started to sort of address how when you used to rail against certain things it just brought those that experience towards you more obviously like everybody has you know knowing yourself and deciding what kind of rebel you're going to be if you're going to be an informed and enlightened rebel or just one who's rebelling out of anger or whatever can you kind of address those fears and maybe give people some sort of tools for helping them decide who they're going to be in this in this yeah and I, I think the first stage is don't create a war out of it don't create a war um, look at yourself first and then um, and, and then in your mind you're creating your own uh, ideal um, way or, or uh, way of, of function because no matter what okay so if we're talking about 5G, because that a lot of buzz, I mean, people are doing like big talks on it and all of that. To me, in a way, it's a waste of time. And the only reason why I'm saying that to people is because 5G is nothing. What we're going to be getting into is like, wait, and it's always going to keep going like that. This is what people have to understand. It's going to 5G, 10G, it, it, it's going to have 50G. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. yeah, it's going to keep going because it's. There's no limit on those numbers. <laughs> it's part of the evolution, technological evolution. And as that evolution is happening, this technology right here is going to evolve. It, it is evolving. And that's part of nature's preparation as well. That's why we're pliable. So ultimately, eventually, folks are going to be they're going to be fine just like we you know we talk about chemtrails well since we all have to breathe you know we've sucked in god knows what we've sucked in probably all kinds of little nanoparticles whatever the bottom line of it is the part of you that supersedes all of that is that part of you that is, that is beyond just this physical interpretation of yourself and this 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 character identity that i talk about um, that part of you supersedes that. So when you're talking about fighting with the system to get out of it, filing papers, been there, done that, you never get out. You always just go on another list. It just, you, there is no getting out in that sense because that's not the ultimate out. It's like saying that I have to ask them to give me papers for my freedom. Well, they, they never had it to begin with. What they've given is an illusion then of not being free on top of the illusion of what freedom is supposed needing to look papers. like. And it's the illusion of needing papers. Yeah. Absolutely. So the structure, the very system ha has made sure that no matter which way the person goes, unless they rise up in, in a certain level of awareness, which of course rises up in frequency, changes that the, the frequency, um, is always going to be, there's something there for you that you're gonna feel like you're getting out, but not really. So that's why the level that we're talking about is completely different. So it was what, what did we say? Five, five, five G, uh, four, four vaccinations and four real ID. There's always, okay, so let's put it this way. Um, there's always somehow, on some things, there's always going to be an, an out. Um, now it depends, you know, for some people they're like, well, what if it's, you know, if it's my job and, uh, I don't want to get, leave my job, but this is, you know, what I'm having to do. Um, there, there is well, probably might be that for some people that that will come up. Um, I think that's where we have to make choices. Now, if the choice is that I have to keep my job, I really want to keep my job and you end up having to take the vaccine, then you need to figure, you need to now know the things that you do to balance that out because so surely as things go in it can be it can be um uh overridden yeah yeah it can be yeah. overridden because it's all frequencies so this is what we're dealing with these frequencies so um so whatever needs to happen you don't come at it with fear um the next thing is with the real id 
eh, everybody's going to have to go get a real ID. Um, you just you just have to have it. And for me, I, I have made a conscious decision at, at the time when this whole thing started with the, with the scanner that I was always just going to get pat down because I, you know, that, those are my options right now to either be, pet, you know, to be pat down or go through it. But since I don't even go to the doctor for x-rays, I'm like, I'm not going to go through it. I'm just pat me down. Those are my options. But I'm not going to not travel but I'm just going to, I always opt out. So that, that's what I do. So I, you look for the course of action that is, is going to be best. You guess you're going to be best able to work with. Um, that's what you have to do and know that in all cases, who you are is, tra it does transcend all of that. Um, and, and we have to see other angles of the game. We have to see opportunities. So there's alchemical solutions for all of these situations. Absolutely. No yep. matter what you decide, there's, there's another choice to be made on the other side of it that, that can cancel it out or advance to something greater. Absolutely. Yeah. And stay away from the fear mongers. I have heard from yeah, many absolutely. people that have said, that, you know, they're done with it. Stay away from the fear mongers. And, and right now, Stop spending your time watching the news because that's part of the program. That's what they're hoping that you do so that you get to, to get your daily upload of, upload of suggestions. Hit, yeah. 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 You know, so make, yeah. make, make the choice. Choices are, that's all you have the choices. You have that choice. It, you're responsible for you, regardless of the illusion um, of how it looks like you have no control, but you do. You have choices, and um, yeah. we're going to choose here to alchemically turn to the um, patron side of the show. So before we head out the door to do that, Sonia Barrett, tell people where they can find you. I don't know. I'm still trying to find me, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GPS on me. Uh, it's therealsoniabarrett.com. Therealsoniabarrett.com. That's the cyber, you know, cyberspace. You got to go find me there. That's my website. And everything you need to find out is on there. Lots, you know, workshops and so on. It's all on there. It's therealsoniabarrett.com. There you go. Well, y'all got choices to make now. It's your responsibility. Do it. You can choose to join us on the other side. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash off planet media. Yeah, either way it's a choice, see? There you go. This is off planet radio. Thank you.